This is my DIY solar combiner box. I also have a disconnect for my two series strings. As they come into the combiner box, I will be able to disengage my array at any point that I want if I need to work on my combiner box. Now instead of actually showing you all the different connections I'm making and cutting wires and boring you to death, I thought I would just build it and then go an overview and show you everything I've done. So in this box, I have all of my markings for my voltage, my current. I have all my switches in here. So I have fuses for my overcurrent protection. I have a breaker for when my series strings get paralleled together. I have lightning protection or surge protection. And I also have a GFCI protection on my solar array. Now, if you have a smaller system, uh, you can get away with running uh, inline fuse style, which is this. This just screws open and inside you'll have a fuse like this. Typically, you'll run about a 15 amp fuse on most solar arrays. I have two 15 amp fuses inside my box and then a 25 amp breaker. This style of project can be intimidating for a lot of people. You can buy pre-made combiner boxes, watts 24-7 has a great selection of combiner boxes and they're all of a great build quality. So the way I have this configured is my two series strings will come into this. This is by Ames Power. This is a PV array disconnect isolator. And then my two series strings are gonna come out of this side. They're gonna run over and run into the bottom of my combiner box. Now inside my combiner box is a whole lot of wiring. Inside of here, I have my positive and negative for my first series string and my positive and negative from my second series string. Now on the positive side, the positive runs underneath and then comes up into my fuse protection. Now inside here, I have a 15 amp fuse rated for 1000 volts DC. My second string does the same, comes up, runs into the fuse. Then they both run out and they run into this terminal block over here. And on the top side of the terminal blocks, I used a ferrule. And that is because the hole inside of the terminal block connection here was a little bit bigger than I would have liked. So I used a ferrule and I have it under both screws of the terminal block here. After coming out of the terminal block, they are now paralleled together. So two coming in, one coming out and runs into the top of my breaker, comes out the breaker, runs over, comes into the top of my GFCI protection, and then out the bottom of the GFCI protector here is gonna be my main positive to run to my charge controller. Okay, I needed to uh, stop. I was doing my editing of my video and I realized that I'd actually left out one wire. So this negative wire has a jumper running to the surge protector. I would left this wire out. So let me quickly explain what the surge, how the surge protector works. It has a jumper from the positive and negative into the top of the surge protector with the ground wire that's going to be my 6 AMG copper wire that's going to run out to my grounding electrode. And in the event of a surge, it will trip these, which will then dissipate the excess charge out through the grounding electrode. Now for the rest of this video, you're not going to see this jumper cable. I just added it in during editing process. Now for the ground fault circuit interrupter, this has the, don't get disillusioned by the negative sign there, uh, follow the instructions. But the, the positive comes in here and then the positive comes out. So this is going to be my main positive. And then for the detection for the GFCI, you have your battery or solar array negative that comes around and I have it underneath these two black wires in this terminal block and then the ground wire is going to come in loop around and it just connects into the ground for my overcurrent protection now I am going to run a six gauge copper wire if I was using aluminum I'd run an eight gauge but because I'm running copper I'm going to run a six gauge and that's going to come out here and run into my grounding electrode. This is gonna monitor between the ground and the negative, and if it detects anything, it's gonna trip. Now, in the instructions to wire this up, 
it does say that this white wire needs to go to your battery negative. It also says at the end of the instructions, if you're running a battery list system, then you can run this to the PV negative. Now when I run my main cables over to my charge controller, I may run another conductor for this wire and disconnect it from the solar array negative. Still undecided, uh, let me know in the comment section what you think I should do in that circumstance. But yeah, pretty, uh, pretty simple. All these parts were sourced on AliExpress. Uh, I'll leave links in the description for what you can do to pick them up. And I think this build turned out rather nicely. Uh, something to mention, all these cables here are PV rated cables. Uh, when I purchased my 310 watt panels while I was at the store, I was talking with some of the employees and I, and I just asked them, I said, do you have any solar wires or any branch connectors you guys have used on other jobs that you no longer have a use for? And they said, yeah, sure, here you go. So these are a little bit sun beaten already, but since they're inside the box, uh, they're not going to be seeing the sun anymore. And I am going to mount this underneath my array behind it. So no more sun is going to be on these wires and it'll be out of the rain. Uh, this box itself is actually rated for being waterproof. It does have a seal around here or gasket. So it's going to keep it from getting rained on. Uh, my GFCI, I did have to cut a little bit bigger for that to fit in the combiner box. And yeah, I think this turned out pretty good. So the connections left for me to run for this before I mount it is I'm going to be using a flexible conduit. That's going to connect into here. And my two 10 gauge wires are going to come out of here and run into my solar charge controller. And my ground wire for my grounding electrode is going to come out of here. And then that should be it. All I have to do is mount this on the pole mount my disconnect above it, and then I'm fully protected. Also, this combiner box is gonna be used with a ground mount system. Uh, while I've been researching what I need to do to safely operate my system, I've been reading a lot in the code book. For you to actually mount panels on top of a building or structure, there's quite a lot more things that you need to do in order to ensure safety. One of the biggest thing is having a, I believe it's called a photovoltaic dissipation something. Uh, I'll have to look that up and I'll write it in the bottom here. But what that'll do is it protects the firefighters. If they come to your house and they need to fight a fire that's in your house, at your main disconnect for the solar array, you need to have this. It rapidly dissipates all the power once the disconnection is engaged and then that way they can start spraying water onto your home. If you don't have this, you can put the safety of firefighters at risk so just make sure that you read the code book for your area and you have all the safety devices in place for what you need to do to connect your array. Also in a rooftop mounted system, I know for my area, I have to have a schematic, I have to have disconnects in certain locations. I have to have quite a few things in order to run a roof mounted system. So for me, I have an area where there's a lot of property. I'm gonna run a ground mounted system and also my inverter and my charge controller, which is gonna be my grow watt, that's all gonna be inside a utility trailer that's on wheels. So I'm kind of in the area where it's not a building or structure, it's something that's movable. Just make sure that you read the code book for your area. It's very important to try and stay safe. Thanks for watching, bye.